Hello, my name is Kia Howard, and today I'll be giving a presentation on soil organisms. To give you an idea of what I'll talk about today, I've included this topics covered slide. First, I'll start with different types of soil organisms, and then their abundance in the soil system. Then I'll go on to talk about specific soil organisms such as earthworms, nematodes, fungi, and bacteria. All right, so there are different types of soil organisms, and I'll be discussing them based on their size. We're gonna start with the biggest and then move down to the smallest. The biggest group is called macrofauna, and these are larger than two millimeters in size. I've included a few pictures of some of the macrofauna, such as moles, ants, beetles, maggots, spiders, earthworms, snails, and slugs. So these are things that you can see with the naked eye. Then we have mesofauna, and these are 0.1 to 2 millimeters in size, so a little bit smaller. These include mites, and on the left-hand side of the screen, that first picture, different sizes and types of mites, protura, small clear worms, and also columbula. The next size is smaller than 0.1 millimeters, and these are called microfauna. These include nematodes, rotifers, amoeba, and ciliates. And also, we can't forget about microflora. So this is also smaller than 0.1 millimeters in size. This includes yeasts, molds, mushrooms, fungi, actinomycetes, diatoms, and of course, bacteria. So what about their abundance in the soil system? If you took one gram of soil, how many bacterial cells do you think you would find? I think the answer would surprise you. So one gram of soil is something that would easily fit into the palm of your hand. The answer is up to 10 billion bacterial cells in that one tiny little gram. So there's a lot of activity going on in the soil profile. So to also ask this question, how many meters of fungal hyphae are in that same one gram of soil along with the 10 billion bacterial cells? So fungal hyphae are microscopic filaments of fungi, kind of like little arms reaching out through the soil. So how many meters of that do you think you'd find in one gram? 10 to 1,000 meters of hyphae in that one small gram. There's a lot going on. And also some abundance of different types of organisms in the soil. We also have algae. You can have 1,000 to 10,000 algae. Nematodes, up to 100 nematodes in that same one gram. And then also possibly up to 10 mites in that one gram. There's a lot of different stuff going on in that small one gram of soil. So you can imagine on a larger scale how much stuff is going on. So now we get to talk about earthworms. There are 7,000 species of earthworms, and they literally eat their path through soil. So they like to eat detritus, organic material, and even other microorganisms. And what they do is they eat the soil so they can move down through the soil profile. As they move down the soil profile, the path that they leave is called a burrow. And these burrows are helpful for plants who want to grow roots and get access to more water and nutrients in the soil profile. And then also, after they eat their way through the soil, they have excrement that comes out the other end, and these are called casts. And I've included a picture of casts at the bottom of the screen. You've probably seen this in your front or backyard or at a local park. And these casts are very high in organic matter, nutrients, and bacteria. In fact, these casts, when compared to normal soil, have higher levels of cation exchange capacity, specifically calcium and potassium. They also have higher levels of soluble phosphorus and total nitrogen content. And also, earthworms prefer moist, cool environments with a lot of air, generally with a neutral pH of 5.5 to 8.5. Next, we have nematodes. There are about 20,000 different species of nematodes and they can live in all different soil types. They usually move through the soil pores and they can also live in aquatic areas, so in microscopic pockets of water. 
Something interesting about them is that they can go into a cryptobiotic state. It's kind of a resting state where they kind of chill out. They're not eating. They're, there's not a lot of respiration going on. And they're just waiting until they feel like they want to come back. Also, nematodes like to munch on fungi or bacteria, or they can even be predatory and, and munch on other nematodes. So this is a picture that I've included in the top right-hand corner. If you're a nematode and you see another nematode coming at you like that, you're probably going to go the other way. Also, some nematodes have been used as pest control. So some nematodes like to munch on insect larvae, um, corn rootworms, grubs, and they have been sold, specific species have been sold to control those specific types of pests. And then we move on to fungi. Fungi are the main decomposers in the soil system. They are versatile and persistent. Sometimes they can live in areas that some other bacteria cannot survive in. And they have hyphae, I mentioned this earlier. So hyphae, those are the microscopic filaments that go through the soil. And when you have a lot of microscopic filaments, they sort of create a network, and that's called mycelium. So this network of hyphae through the soil actually stabilizes the soil structure. Uh, one of the more commonly known fungi is arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, also known as AMF. That can create mutually beneficial symbiosis between the fungi and a plant. I've included a picture in the top right corner of AMF. Uh, AMF is composed of arbuscules that are inside of the plant root, also the hyphae that goes inside of the plant root and outside back to the AMF. So what this does is it gives plants a broader network to get to more water and nutrients and AMF and the plant share those nutrients together. On the other hand with fungi you can have something called mycotoxins and those are chemicals produced by the fungi that can be harmful for other plants and also humans. And one of the most commonly known ones is aflatoxin and that's produced by Aspergillus flavus. It's actually carcinogenic. Oh, one interesting thing to know is that there are over one million species of fungi that are awaiting discovery in the soil. So there's still a lot we don't know about fungi. Okay, and the final topic is bacteria. So as I noted before, there are up to 10 billion bacterial cells in one gram of soil. And something interesting to note is that 90 to 99% of bacteria cannot be cultured with the methods that we have today. No matter what type of nutrients that we put into the culture or if we do aerobic or anaerobic. So there's still a lot to be learned about bacteria in the soil system. Bacteria is also involved in all stages of the nitrogen cycle. They're involved in nitrogen fixation, ammonification, nitrification, and also denitrification. Also, after fungi, they're an important component of the breakdown of organic material in the soil. We have actinomycetes, which is kind of like an in-between of bacteria and fungi. They're filamentous bacteria that are in the soil. We also have cyanobacteria, which contain chlorophyll, and they can photosynthesize just like plants do. Also, bacteria can be evolved in bioremediation. So some bacteria can break down organic compounds into smaller, um, less harmful compounds than before. To wrap this up, we talked about different types of soil organisms, macro, meso, and microfauna, and also microflora. We talked about the abundance of soil organisms in the soil system, 10 billion bacterial cells and one gram of soil. We also discussed earthworms and the benefits of their burrows and casts that they create throughout the soil profile. Then we talked about nematodes, their persistence almost everywhere, and their involvement in pest control. And then we talked about fungi, the primary decomposers in soil, and some of the beneficial associations they can make with plants. And we follow that up with bacteria and how they're involved in all aspects of the nitrogen cycle and also in decomposition. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.